happened about in countries. Thank you. Thank you. Staff mobility. Mm -hmm. um, you asked a question earlier on mm -hmm. what specifically is preventing mobility of both staff and students. Mm -hmm. And I would say quality mm -hmm. is a key issue. Okay. And so um, we have to take quality assurance seriously in our higher education institutions. There was a time when ADU you know, promoted this issue and universities were encouraged to set up quality assurance um, units. Mm -hmm. uh, some universities responded. It got to a point where uh, in Ghana here we even formed uh, uh, a joint you know, committee of uh, quality assurance. Uh, it went on for about four years, but it fizzled out. At some point in Nigeria, the idea of uh, forming sub-regional quality assurance committees was mooted. And that also fizzled out. You know, I think if we want uh, transfer <coughs> mobility of both students and staff, you know, between our universities, and then we should take the quality assurance seriously, mm -hmm. you know, at national level, at sub-regional level, and at regional level, so that once we are able to harmonize our good academic practices, mm -hmm. you see, harmonization, and you don't harmonize anything. Yeah. It is only the good practices yeah. that we need to harmonize. Mm -hmm. So once you are able to do that, mm -hmm. and set standards that we are all complying uh, with, and then we can uh, move freely, you know, uh, between countries. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. I think uh, the Secretary General of the Association of African Universities is here and uh, uh, is hearing uh, direct from the people uh, who are giving us uh, this idea that AAU has got a key role to play. In quality assurance, surely speaking, we are taking it seriously too as uh, AAU because uh, as the coordinator of the Continental Education Strategy for Africa, we are compelled to make sure we hold workshops that improve the quality of quality assurance, the quality of research, uh, the quality of teaching skills, but sometimes people don't uh, take up the workshops. But we have had uh, a number of countries and institutions patronizing this. Thank you very much for that input. I, I wanted also to, to check um, regarding the students too. You know, somebody raised the issue of uh, uh, credits and uh, uh, the differences also in uh, completion rates. You see at a degree like uh, accounting or let's take medicine. Accounting, somebody does it in three years, somebody does it in four years, but they are all called <laughs> accountants. <laughs> it's so funny. And then you look at the number of courses, some did 23, some 24. So I think as she was trying to explore, these are the kind of things that we are talking about in addition to what they've said. So if you also look at uh, the stuff, it's the same thing. So. How do we move on from here? And what are the foreseen challenges? He said they are formed and they break down. My issue is now, AAU is here. What is your advice on us to move on from here now? And uh, you also advise us on the possible challenges, but we will be dealing with you. You are the Association of African Universities and we are the Secretariat. So let's hear again from the panelists. Let me talk about some of the challenges in the area of harmonization. Uh, the first issue is the political judicial consideration. Uh, when do I 
because it's no well popularized in the system, you will not get students from it. That also constrains you to that investment plan. And also the sustainability of the entire institution. The sustainability of the entire institution is so crucial that it's making it still, uh, difficult for some of the institutions to go into that. So those are some of the challenges we want to look at. As I said, if there's no diversification, we all doing the same thing, the more or less it's a normalization by default. So we want to look at the diversification within the context of, of normalization. Yes, uh, Prof. I have a very short comment on what, mm. Anna, what I understood that is the diversification is addressing the program, mm. program diversification. And harmonization is in, I mean, not to concentrate on humanity and science and on this. You can also add distance learning, you can classical learning, mm. different uh, programs in science, in new programs for diversification. Harmonization means mm. that the system Mm. and the standards mm. are generally accepted for all institutions in Africa. Yes. And the credential will be accepted by everybody. Yes. And the more the uh, students from one uh, country or in the same country from one university to another, it will be easy. Mm -hmm. Especially due to the shortage of the staff, we need the staff which can uh, participate in different uh, universities. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much uh, for that clarification. I think I need to make another further clarification that uh, uh, when we do the same programs, it's not necessarily harmonization, but there are things which should be harmonized, yeah. like the credit system. Yes. We can have the same program, but uh, if you have uh, 20 credits and this one 30 credits, or for the same degree program, let's now agree to say we all agree on 23, something like that. The same with uh, the content, minimum board of knowledge is important, but people sometimes don't understand it. We want the minimum board of knowledge, but we can add on, so that will be the source of competition. Uh, thank you very much for bringing that, and uh, these clarifications too are important because uh, they are the ones which make us resist. Because if I'm not thinking we will be offering exactly the same program, yeah. it becomes a challenge. Yeah. And I see now where some of the resistance comes from. There is need for education. Having said that, may I please uh, uh, call upon uh, Professor Elamin Osman uh, to do a three minutes. I'm going to give you between three to five minutes. I don't know how long it is. Oh, the issues have been addressed. But uh, there is one part about the British Accreditation Council requirements. Can I? If you don't give uh, That one, I'm not sure because you raised the point which is very pertinent okay. that we can't okay. continue to go to Britain, America, and Australia to get these standards. It's a very key issue. So we need to concentrate now on what we have in the continent because people used to go there because there was none. Now we want to work on what we now have. So we'll share with you. Thank you very much. Um, so other than that presentation, I am now opening the floor uh, to have questions from you. Uh, I'll take three questions at a time, so that, or comments, so that we round uh, up this uh, session. Uh, Dr. Faiza, uh, say... Yes, so we have two so far. Let's start. Okay. You will come next, Dr. Faisa. I wanted to come. Thank you. Mm. I am Dr. Adebwa from Ethiopia. Mm. Talking about harmonization and the others and the need of uh, accreditation, mm. I'm wondering we are in Ghana having this discussion, mm. currently in this room, how many policy makers from the National Accreditation Board and the National Council for Tertiary Education are here? I'm really wondering, the chief executives, the heads of department, who are at these places, who need to understand this discussion, mm. how many are here? Because at the end of the day, when we are going for accreditation, it is these same institutions we have to go to for acceptance. I'm also wondering whether we have an 
African Qualifications Board or African Accreditation Board so that that board can set standards which will be competitive and accepted to all African universities. For instance, if I want to go to South Africa, I know I must get accreditation from their National Accreditation Board. And once they give me accreditation, every university in South Africa will accept because they have given the accreditation and placed you at a certain level. We have something like that for the whole of the African continent. Because once we get something like that, it becomes something that all the universities will now work towards and ensure that their staff fit into that framework and it makes mobility very easy. Thank you. Thank you very much for the contribution. You will be the third one. Let's have Dr. Faiza and say the third. Then we will then come to pick three more people after responding to this one. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, thank you very much for the input. Thank you, uh, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, for now, let's uh, refer what the three have said to, to the panelists. Do you have anything to say? 
in reaction, you can go ahead. Yeah, that's a good observation for my colleague, but I also want to agree with you that they are administrators. They are all stakeholders. And we play a very important role in shaping the education landscape in this country or in Africa. We have to talk. We need to put all the documents together and get back to the If we just keep quiet, nothing will change. Mm -hmm. Because something about the issue, but we had a problem with the technical investors that the people, the experts that they sent to review our documents, our curriculum, they send people with a theoretical background. So we offer competency based training. We always have issues with them, arguing with them because they don't really understand what we are offering. So we wrote a letter to accreditation board of that, no, please can you bring people from the industry, those who understand the experts that understand competency-based training. Mm. And it's made an impact. So let's talk, let's put the document together, let's write to them. Also, who are those who serve on the board? It's mm. the professors, it's us. Mm -hmm. it's some of us, we don't really understand what is happening in the diversification and the differentiation. They think we should all go be like Legon or UCC, but it will not work. We are different. So as professors and academicians, if we understand what we are doing, then we don't look down upon one particular mode of delivery. And we embrace it and support the whatever way, and we make a lot of impact. So let them stay in their offices, but let's interrogate their issues, let's write to them, and influence the policy that to come out. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Another. Mm -hmm. I think the presence of the regulatory agencies at this meeting is crucial. Actually, I think the Sanifu was supposed to be on this uh, panel, so it's extremely important. Uh, I think the, our accreditation system has been around for a while. Mm -hmm. The intentions are very clear. But as we go on, there are some few bottlenecks we need to resolve. The point I made earlier, I need to clarify. When I say zero diversification means normalization by default, I meant it. In Ghana here, you have seen two universities running the same program, same curriculum, through the accreditation system. The same uh, officers come around and uh, validate you. Right? They give you programs from their parent universities. You can go look and look and look at BSCIT program. I used to be on accreditation team. We look at the BSCIT program being offered by the universities in this country curriculum, where they're almost the same. So where is the normalization issue there? That's all. The teaching method, there's no very much different there. Because of the affiliation process, we all happen to be getting the same degree from the same institution. So the three components of harmonization that I talked about have been taken care of. So the point I'm making is that when you have a situation where diversification is almost zero, you are all doing the same thing, the same curriculum, recruiting the same student, teaching the same way, getting the same degree, then you don't have, you don't need harmonization. What are you going to do that? So it's extremely important that our criteria system we have here, we need to store that signal that diversification is a problem. And because of the diversification, it's difficult for us to talk about these harmonization issues. I'm just talking within the content of that. These are the private universities, which are more regulated than the public universities in our situation here. So diversification is important, but the current regime that we have here, that we don't have it in Nigeria, we have a situation where if you really want to normalize, it is difficult because if you look at the syllabus, the credit hours, the degree of the is almost completely the same. In fact, with the problem we are facing in the private sector in Ghana, some of them propose that why not some universities go to another university and take the classes because it's the same thing. That's the level to which we have lack of diversification in our system. May I quickly ask you a question? So are you saying the credit system is the same, the content knowledge is, uh, you have the same minimum board of knowledge, or just in brief, uh, because yeah, our basically, time is also... Well, what I said, the accreditation process, bring the same team to look at a course like BSE Information Technology, the same team. 
No, I mean the credit hours. The credit hours, yes. Everything is the same. <laughs> so that way, in that regard, I really agree with you that once the credit hours and the content is the same, uh, then maybe we can uh, say here yeah, already it has happened. But uh, there's a point also uh, which one of the panelists raised uh, before uh, we come on to you, that uh, we can do our literal at some levels. Some of the things that we are discussing here can be done at institutional level. Some can be done uh, by institutions who offer the same degree programs just to check the differences and try to uh, bring some order to them. So there are certain things which can be done at different levels, and let's push them like that. Let's hear from you, sir, and then in the interest of time, we see what we can do. Yeah, thank you, uh, Margarita. Um, I also agree uh, with the fact that uh, these two bodies, they should have been here. Mm -hmm. You know, the National Accreditation Board, uh, the NCT, we even had uh, the <coughs> Yes. Program. Yes. If you have been on this panel, mm -hmm. now uh, just forwarding our decisions to them uh, may not necessarily be the same if they were here and they, they felt the atmosphere, the passion with which you know issues were raised. Uh -huh. Then when they received the communique, their attitude towards it would be different. different. Mm -hmm. You know. Now accreditation, they are supposed to streamline the diversification, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Now, and you, you said that we are doing very well with diversification. We all, in, within the various universities, we have various academic programs. Mm -hmm. Now, we have, in this country, uh, unemployed graduates. Mm -hmm. They have even formed an association. Right? I believe maybe in other countries, too, there, there might be some uh, redundant you know, graduates. Now, how is the accreditation being done? You know, well, last week I was at a meeting when, you know, the head of uh, secondary school was saying that uh, they don't have teachers in IT, science, and so on. But I asked him, but what about the unemployed graduates? He said that, there are, you know, not many of them are in these areas. We, we have produced a lot of graduates whose you know, services may not be needed. But the programs that produce them in the various universities have been accredited. Now, in this country, maybe in other uh, African countries, we do not have a database of um, you know, um, human you know, resource needs you know, as we are developing. If we are developing in a particular direction, we, our human resource needs will keep changing. And higher education institutions are supposed to produce, the, to keep pace with the national human resource needs. So I'm thinking that before a new academic program is given accreditation, it should be um, in consonance with the human resource needs of the nation. We don't have a database. So in the universities, we admit students in the background. We don't admit students with reference to the national human resource needs. So I'm suggesting that the National Accreditation Board, the NCTE, they should make sure that we have a database of human resource needs so that when we are diversified, we diversify accordingly to address the human resource needs. Mm -hmm. When we are admitting students, we know that in the next five years, we need so many physics teachers, we need so many uh, civil engineers, we need so many you know, chemistry teachers, and so on, so that when we are admitting into our programs, we, 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 we um, admit accordingly. Mm -hmm. And we don't admit students in various areas and produce them, and they become redundant in the system. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we need to check on that because he has brought another dimension that has not been raised, but very pertinent. Let's check, is it just diversification for the sake of it?
Definition. So I think there was uh, one end close to the Secretary General, and then we wind off. Yes, sir. Felicia, come here. Hey, this man will respond to his question. Hey, there, you have my problem. Why do you allocate this on issues you know they are at the heart of people? It's okay. I think we do it. Not everybody should respond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, do you have, do you wanted to say something? No. Hello. Okay. Yes. One, two, and we conclude. Three, and we are done. Please allow me. My observation of question is that I think our resource person, Prof. Chudon. Mm. But I would like to differ on that aspect. For example, here in USD runs two year program in master's program. And they call it MSC, Masters of Science and Technology. And that became a problem with the University of Cape Coast. The University of Cape Coast runs two year master's program and calls it MPhil. So when two products come out, they were confused because they know that Masters of Science is a one year program without no research. The KUSD does it for one year course and one year research. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the last set of people who did MSc for two years. Mm -hmm. So when this certificate comes out, they, they become, you know, they want to wonder why is it that you are doing two different um, things that you say that you're saying then as a research program. So that's the problem that we have with uh, our institutions where we have different programs going on. Mm -hmm. So as we said, it is right time that uh, we look at this as the accreditation aspect of it, where we have the same thing. For example, in South Africa, where students are running higher national diploma, in that they do it for three years. So this last year, they spend one year in industry. In Ghana, we do it as internship. So they spend three months rather doing internship, but in South Africa, it's one year. So if students, graduate from Ghana and go to South Africa, it will be different. Mm. They will not be able to be accepted in, the, in terms of their practical uh, exposure. Mm. So I think it is right time that the, this time is not the NCT, but we should have a body, mm. you know, an accreditation body in Africa, probably championed by AAU, mm. to come up with those, you know, parameters. Mm. So that if somebody is doing, you know, a DSC program in this level, they should do that same program so that they can have that credit transfer. Mm -hmm. Because you can't do different programs and you expect credit transfer. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work. Thank you very and, much. And, and I'll lastly, cut you short. Lastly, um, I want to add a resolution. Yes, I believe some of our vice chancellors are on the NCT board. I know it respectfully, Professor Smile is supposed to be on the NCT board. And our NAB is now National Accreditation Board. And I think <coughs> Professor Isowa was also a member, I believe. They should be able to share with us what happens at the National Accreditation Board. What do they look at? Uh, because if we are blaming, blaming them, I think they are there. They are advisors, so they should tell us what goes in there. Yes, in the interest of time, can we have uh, the gentleman there and him, and then we are closing. Sorry, I know we can't choke you. There was a yes. Investing students, students level. Um, I think that in Africa, our education system 
is based on competition. Where students will have to compete for product quality, that is A. Where we go to class and then we are being taught how to make A in class. And once you are able to make an A or B, then it means that you are a good student. Um, I think it's getting to a point in time where we need to have an education system where we have shorter hours in class and the more hours on the phone developing ourselves. It, it happens in Finland and in Singapore where they are having shorter hours in class and the longer hours on the phone learning their poor work. Because you graduate and then it so happens that you are being uh, positioned or you go for employment, you get it and then you don't know your whereabouts. Because all what you are taught is based on theory, theory, theory. But I think that when, once you're able to change this, that is the diversification that we are talking about, then it's going to help us. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. The last uh, contributor is the last one in the interest of time. The question is, why do institutions diversify? Uh -huh. From where I stand, the dwindling financing from government is going down year by year, and as a result, they diversify by looking at areas where um, they can break even or make profit. That's why institutions they have diversified. Now, the sophistication of industry must also require institutions to respond to that. Yeah. And that is the reason why I agree with um, Professor Kipko's former provide Chancellor that we admit students in the back room not on the basis of the sophistication of industry and industry demand. Mm. And then finally, with the issue of credit transfer, mm. I think it will be very difficult, but I thank AAU, and AAU knows what I'm talking about. I'm talking about tuning Africa. Mm. The methodology for the curriculum design mm -hmm. from the National Accreditation Board by all Ghanaian institutions differ from University of Ghana, University of Cape Coast, UPSC, and the rest, and the rest. But when we have a common framework by which we can design the curriculum acceptable by all institutions in mm. Ghana mm. and also acceptable by other African institutions, then we can now begin to talk about credit transfer. Mm. Else we forget about credit transfer. Mm. It will not happen. Mm. Thank you very much. Let's uh, also clap hands for the contributions and the questions made. Uh, in the interest of time, I will call upon a, a Professor uh, Tsuyama to come and uh, wrap up, and then we conclude the session. I see people were very much interested. We should have allocated more time to it, but thank you very much uh, for the insights. Thank you. Thank you very much. This has been very exciting, mm -hmm. very much, because it touches the core of uh, higher education in, in uh, Africa. Um, the gentleman, the, I suppose, the student, your, I like your contribution mm -hmm. because, and that's what makes the technical universities uh, uh, have play a major role in the development of the country because. What you are talking about is what really happens at in technical, technical universities. universities, where practical is 70 percent and theory about 30 percent. In fact, most developed countries, Germany, Russia, and all those advanced countries, that is the essence of uh, education: it's more practicals than the, the, the theory. Um, the, M the MSC and M21, yes, uh, as we said, I was at now for six years, uh, National Museum for six years. And I know that at the point in time, we didn't differentiate between MSC and M21. All that we see is that it's your uh, degree research master's. So and then if you say, oh, we did one year theory, and uh, one year talks, and one year uh, research, then it's a research degree, and it doesn't matter the name you will be in college. But I would say, from here, all the discussion so far, I will summarize it in, in, in one or two sentences. That is, um, mentorship kills diversification. Wow. Mentorship kills diversification. And, and that is because when you are a private investor, and you want to um, design a program to diversify, to make sure that you, you look different from what everybody does. 
because of the mental your the, uh, your mental institution doesn't run that program, so you cannot run it because they don't have the expertise there, and because they don't have expertise, they will not accept the program. So if they don't accept, then you can move uh, forward. Case close. Case close. Yeah, you can't go anywhere, and that's where I say that, that the mentorship curls that institution, and then the current. And the accreditation system we have also curves diversification. And what we, you see, they bring panel members, not the, the, not the accreditation board itself, but the system. They, they bring a panel member to your institution. You want to run a program. Then this panel member comes from University A. So the University A, the, this is how we do our Yes. Ah. So that is how you should do it. And you recently had the experience, Regent, they wanted, wanted to run a PhD three years, in three years. And then somebody comes from another university where PhD is four years. So he said, no, you can't run the PhD for three years. It should be four years. I said, why? Because that is what happened there. I said, but our mental institution it's three years. They've been for three years. But they still insist that it should be three years. Mm -hmm. Right. You see? So so the, the system is a curse. Like then take the technical universities. You bring somebody who has a PhD in I mean research, using the research to do a PhD and <coughs> gets it. Then you take the, this person to a technical university that go and uh, and uh, assess their program. He doesn't understand the competency-based training. <coughs> the CBT is a competency-based training. That is what is used uh, at the, the, for the and the technical universities. But he doesn't understand it. He understands the uh, uh, learn the book. If you are able to memorize and then you are able to write, you pass. But this is where it's a hands on. But then, when he goes, he wants to modify your, your program so that it suits his concept of education. So that one too doesn't work. So I would say, as I'm saying, mentorship curves diversification and the accreditation system, mm -hmm. the way it is being implemented, also curves diversification. Don't change, it's difficult to move higher education as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Can we please give them a round of applause? Okay. Uh, so we want to especially thank the moderator, Dr. Makuku, and her team of panelists, made up of Professor Clemens Jidonu, the President AIT, Professor G.C. Smile, VC of Kovoria Technical Universities, Dr. Jos Josiah Koba, Lawe Vice President, uh, Prof. Kobina Yaksin, former Prof. VC of the University of Cape Coast, and Prof. Eliman Osman Said Mohammed, Vice President, National University of Sudan. So at this time, it's actually time for lunch break. I think someone once told me that academics prepare to eat discussions and issues more than food. And today, we've really been patient, and even though we're all hungry,